address some of the issues in the morning in his uh, presentation on two-factor authentication and uh, cloud security. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about some of the trends that are going on in the security um, the market, where we see security headed, maybe some thinking out of the box, because that's the um, what we're trying to do here, right? Something different. That what we're also doing, where the industry is going, and also talk maybe about one or two areas that we feel are critical, especially when it comes to compliance. I know a lot of us, security is driven by compliance, right? So um, everyone, I think, knows pretty much why do we need security. These are the questions that you know we have to answer when we're talking about security, right? Primarily, who has access to what? You know, who are, you know, are you compliant? What are the risks? How do you mitigate the risks? How do you prove compliance? So this is what security in general is about, right? Information security, who has access to what? You need to know all of that, right? So now in terms of looking at what are the trends, so where is security going? So we've always had you know, the traditional trends. I know people I'm sure are familiar with concepts like identity management access management, single sign-on, right? I think we all know what they mean, right? Provisioning, deprovisioning of users, doing a single sign-on, one login, all application access, you know, data security, data loss prevention, all of these concepts are familiar in security. But if you look at where we are going, externalization of the business says loss of identity control. So today in our organizations, we have to maintain the identity of the user from when they log in. Right? In the old days, they would come into the office, they would log into, let's say, Windows, and then they would access all their applications. So you would have to provision them to all their different applications. You'd probably have to deprovision them if they left the organization, because otherwise it's a risk. right? And remember, security is all about mitigating this. Right? You can never eliminate it, but you mitigate it. And the user left the organization, you deleted the ID, you put him in a role, the role gives him access to a set of applications, a set of privileges, correct? So that is the traditional security boundary of the identity. But now with externalization of the business, what happens is now the boundaries have gone out of the organization, right? Because you're not no longer controlling identities. In the old days, you had a database server, you had an application server, you had you know, all of this on your infra, in your premise, so you managed all the identities yourself. Now, when you're consuming cloud applications, the identity is not in your control. If you're using applications like CRM, like Salesforce, like we do at CA, or like Google, app, Google Apps, or even Office 365, you are not controlling the identity. How do you manage security in that case, right? So that's what we're trying to answer when we're talking about the new trends in security. So as more and more applications are cloud delivered, which is what we see, and that's what we talked about earlier today, as that's where the market is moving towards, that's where the trends are going, you have to be able to manage the security also externally, right? So you have to manage not only in your environment, but also in all the cloud applications. So enterprise apps, as well as cloud applications, right? So security has to be managed, and the identity has to be managed in all of these applications, right? So that's why we say identity is the new perimeter. It's now who you are, not just within the organization, but even for all the services that you consume, all the applications that you consume, which you don't have a control over. So for example, CA uses Salesforce. I'm in sales for CA. I have an ID in Salesforce because that's our CRM. We use all CRM to do our leads, track our opportunities, and so on and so forth. But we don't have access because CRM is delivered on the cloud. But yet, you know, we have to be provisioned. We have to be deprovisioned. Even within the CRM application, I have a certain set of privileges, right? Because I'm in CA India, I can only look at opportunities in India. My management who sits in Singapore can look at APG opportunities, right? So there is not only the provisioning aspect, but also how do you manage the access within the application? So that's also something that you have to remember, right? So when you're talking about identity is the new parameter, you have to first identify yourself and figure out where it is, how you can you manage this identity. So some of the new uh, technologies, I wouldn't say new, these have been around for a while actually. Uh, that you know what we're, we're leveraging and that you know we showcase in the demo as well is talking about federation, right? So identity federation is common when you're talking about managing identities in the cloud. So this is what exactly we do with Salesforce. When you create a user in CA or when the IT department creates a user in CA in sales because the sales role demands an ID on Salesforce via federation, the ID is created in SFDC. So now when I log into Salesforce, I use my CA credentials to log in. It's the same ID and the same password. I don't have to have a different ID and password to log into Salesforce because it is done using SAML, right? And we probably show that as well in the demonstration uh, for both Google Apps as well as for Salesforce. So you're enabling identity federation because now we are the identity provider and SFDC is the consumer. 
So the SAML is a token that is transferred from the provider to the consumer so that when I go to salesforce.com, I can then use my same identity that's provided by, by identity provider, right? So that's what we are using for single sign-on as well as for identity federation, right? It's pretty clear. So that's how you can manage identities in the cloud as long as you know all the cloud applications support some form of federation or the other, which most of them do anyway, right? So it's a fair statement to say SAML is an industry accepted standard. So most of the applications would consume SAML tokens, which means that you can then manage a federated identity from the cloud, but that same identity can also be managed on-premise, which means the same cloud identity can be provisioned to servers inside your premise as well, right? So that's called a hybrid approach. Because remember, when CA provisions, we provision to the cloud, we provision in-house as well, right? Because we have access to support portal and other applications inside CA that people need access to, right? So that's why it's a hybrid environment. And that's how it usually is. Another next co concept that's coming out is open ID and OAuth. So this is for using it typically with social IDPs. What's a social IDP? A LinkedIn, a Facebook, or Twitter. Why is this more relevant today in the, in the market? It's because, now you probably have seen it, if you log into, go into websites, you have an option to use your social ID identity, correct? It says either create an ID, or it tells you that you can go and use Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. So the reason is that you don't have to create multiple IDs, you can leverage your social identity, and now the IDP is your social ID. So your Facebook or your LinkedIn becomes your social identity provider, and your application now becomes your identity consumer. Right? Now, how is that impacting the trends in the market? Because now what happens, it's not just authenticating the username and the password in LinkedIn or Facebook, it's getting attributes. Remember, whenever SAML tokens are exchanged, or whenever you're using open ID, you can transfer other data just besides an ID and a password, right? which means you can get customer uh, information. Right? You can find out, if I have access, if give my LinkedIn profile, let's say I, lo I log in to some application, third party application using LinkedIn, they know where I work, they know what my title is, they know what my interests are, they know what my hobbies are. That can be used for marketing purposes. So that's where you know, we're looking at using social IDPs. Of course, like we said right here, it's mostly for low-risk applications, but nevertheless, so that's where the market is heading towards, right? So you're leveraging social identity, not just for the sake of providing a single sign-on or say a reduced sign-on, but also for getting new market information, which you can use you know, to further improve your customer experience or enhance your business and your services, right? So that's, uh, and of course, for the high risk, uh, we have the OTP, right? So which also we will show you the one-time password, which is the two-factor auth. I'm sure everybody knows what 2FA is here. Uh, it's mandated now in RBI, right, for a lot of the, all the online banking. Um, even remote access at CA, we have OT, uh, one uh, two-factor authentication for our VPL, VPN solution. All CA employees have to use uh, two-factor authentication to get into, um, um, into the uh, VPN. <coughs> So basically, if you look at it, the cloud first strategy is what we have at CA, where you know, we are using to, for, and from. So I'll just explain these concepts of what it is and how we see uh, them going forward. So we'll show you the OTP, which is the um, two-factor authentication. Like we said, the OTP can be sent over a mobile phone, and there's different ways in which you can get the second factor. It can be a device ID that's stored on your computer. You can answer additional questions based on a certain profile right, to prove your second factor. Typically in banks, for example, you have to do it, right? If you have to transfer a certain amount of money or more, actually, or maybe in sometimes with third party transfers, for example, at HDFC, I remember I had to do an OTP to enable a recipient for third party transfer, right? So these are some examples of where adaptive authentication, high risk applications require a step up on And that's where a lot of the organizations are now looking and it's actually mandated by uh, you know, the government agencies as well, right? So how do you extend on-premise IAM to cloud? Like a simple example like I gave you. You provision in-house, and with federation, you're able to create the ID in the cloud environment, in a cloud application. So CA, Identity Minder, is a solution that we can use to provision in-house, and it can also provision into Salesforce using SAM, right? So the token is transferred, and then I can use my federated identity to log into Salesforce, right? Second is what's also important is now as we migrate to the cloud, right, so fine, so we are saying we're going to consume more and more services from the cloud. But what is the biggest hindrance, or I'm sure you've looked at the research, one of the biggest hindrances to cloud adoption is security. If you are going to consume a service from the cloud, you will probably ask your managed service provider, what level of security do you have there? How can you assure me that my data is safe? I'm giving you patient information, credit card information, customer information. 
I don't know right now because nothing is on premise, right? Everything is coming from the cloud. So where is the database? It's on the cloud. The server, the not everything is on the cloud. There's nothing on your premise. How is your MSP going to assure you that all of this data is secure? So even cloud service providers have to adhere to some of the web access management, data protection, just like you as an on-premise would protect your data, right? So that is how they will assure their customers that they're able to provide their services safe and secure. Okay, so that is what we call it as for the cloud. And then of course the last topic, which is going to be identity services from the cloud. So just like you have different levels of services that can be taken like a service desk from the cloud, you can have identity, single sign-on, federation, two-factor authentication, all of these services delivered through the SaaS model without having to do on-premise you know, installs. Right, so CloudMinder is the platform at CA where we're actually unifying the, the SaaS for all the security services. So today the first three services are actually available, advanced auth, single sign-on, and identity management, which we'll be demonstrating, Karthik will show you that. And of course we have uh, the list of the other security services that are also down the roadmap, but those services are available. So as customers, you do not have to do an on-premise purchase of CA identity minder. If you want to do provisioning or you want single sign-on, you could take the cloud service, or if you wanted advanced authentication, you don't have to do an on-premise install. You can take it as a service from the cloud. So that option is available, and CloudMinder is the platform at CA where we're going to enhance all the security uh, services um, in the SaaS model. Another uh, important aspect I wanted to touch on, uh, especially relevant to the Indian market, and a lot of you are from Telco and from BFSR, even in the enterprise segment, is privilege password management. If you look at the guidelines in RBI, even in TRI, many of the operators or regulators ask you, how do you manage passwords? How do you prove compliance with forensics? For example, looking at recorded sessions, doing searches within the sessions. It's a very tricky subject, right? You have so many devices, network devices, routers, switches, firewalls, servers, applications. All of them have passwords. All the passwords need to be managed somewhere, stored somewhere securely checked out, and then also you need to be able to record the session. Right? So that's another area of interest we see a lot, uh, especially in the Indian market, is the uh, privileged password management. Right? So that's something that we'll, we'll uh, show you as well, just to give you a use case um, on that. <coughs> another uh, interesting technology that we have that recently we acquired is the API management. Uh, API management is about exposing APIs to your end users or your developer communities. As an example, let us say IRCTC, where we all do our railway booking, has an application, right, that books seats and on the trains. Now, if now if I make my trip for uh, all the other, um, you know, uh, service providers, they want to use the IRCTC services to be able to provide the booking from their website. What do they have to do? IRCTC has to expose its services, its applications, and then these companies will then consume them and call them and then make the relevant booking, right? So that means these APIs have to be exposed, whatever the application that IRCTC has written in, whether it's Fortran or COBOL or whatever it is, set of function calls. Now what happens is proprietary applications of these protocols may not be understood if you're calling it using web services or SOAP or REST. Right? Typically the industry is heading towards REST as the method of transfer, web services and REST, right? So API management is about exposing these set of application is interfaces in a more understandable format. So whatever the backend format may be, you can use API management to expose them in a SOAP or REST-based format. So that any consumer application or any developer community can use REST to consume those APIs and then write applications based on them. Right? So if I wanted to open a website and offer railway booking on my website, I'll probably use web services. I don't know anything about COBOL or whatever language that you know IRCTC is writing. And not only that, there's also a security aspect to it. What if my application, I write some backdoor that books 1,000, 1,000 seats when somebody asks for one seat, right? There has to be some control or some gatekeeper when you're exposing these APIs, right? So that's also another area of interest within security that uh, you know we are doing a lot of work on. Uh, mobile gateway as well, so even for mobile applications, if you are exposing certain APIs in your organization to the mobile development community, you need to have a gatekeeper. What APIs are being exposed? Who can access the APIs? When can the access is for how long, right? All of this, information is also uh, ma managed through the uh, layer 7 uh, gateway. It's a new acquisition that we recently completed uh, in security, right? So there is the SOA gateway, which is web services security, as well as the mobile gateway, and the API port. Okay, so um, I think that's all I had in terms of uh, 
the solution stack, um, you know, we do have a couple of solutions, but we will be showing you the cloud minder as well as the uh, control minder. Um, Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Do you support single sign-off? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Federated single sign-off. Right? I'm sorry? You're offering yes. service. On-premise as well as the service. Sure. You want to switch the laptop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> And when you log in with the Facebook credentials, means you're using it to public ID. And when that is being logged in, you have to be captured on the attributes of that public ID. And you have to self-register with the identity monitor solution. So the self-registration will happen. When the self-registration happens, the self-registration also provides when you want to set a password or when I forgot my password and reset my password. Yes. How do I do that? So the self-registration capability will enable you to make sure that you have a password uh, reset capability also. Uh, so uh, Cloud Mentor Solution, we provide this identity management as a service, advanced authentication, and a single sign-on as a service. Three services right now we are offering. And uh, advanced authentication, as Suman said, we actually uh, do an OTP or two-factor authentication. And uh, for federated sign single sign-on, our Cloud Mentor acts as IDP, and the third party, which is uh, other cloud services like uh, Google Apps or Salesforce or Office 365, they act as SP. So here, uh, I want to show this uh, user logging into Cloud Miner using advanced authentication. Is this uh, uh, multi-tenanted in some Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's a multi-tenanted. And you have multiple levels in terms of the uh, uh, end user management. So you could uh, give a bunch of, let's say, for example, you put it on the multi-tenanted system, and then you give a bunch of uh, users to be managed by a third party. You actually are the administrator. Yes. So it's basically, uh, you can you can have an MSP kind of. Work. Yes. Yeah. We have an MSP CSPs, okay. wherein the MSPs we create a multiple tenants and CSP will manage those tenants, and the CSPs will actually create the, again the tenant and tenant administrator actually manage the tenants. And you have a reporting capability where uh, you can actually check uh, the how many users have been actually been registered, uh, which is the billing or charge can be done using the reports, where you can actually see the active users, inactive users in the system. So in order to use this OTP, user has to first enroll uh, to this. Uh